Hi everybody. Um, I'm, I am working on my technology to help uh, improve these presentations and I think I've made a significant improvement um, in the way I'm going to do these things. Uh, what I want to do is cover the first problem that we have for discussion and uh, the way that you let me just show you how to do it. So here we have the problem. It says a car weighing 1200 Newton accelerate from rest with an acceleration of 3.2 meters per second per second for 5.6 seconds. What is the net force acting on the car? Okay, with all of with all problems you should use a, a, a five-step method. The first first step in the method is to um, is to draw a picture and let me get my stylus prepared so the first step here is to draw a picture we've got a car and it is moving uh, it, it, it it's a 1200 Newton car it's accelerating at 3.2 meters per second squared for uh, 5.6 seconds. That's step one. Kind of draw your picture, label it up. Uh, the second step is to write down what what are given and to translate what's been given to you in the problem into variables. So they say that this weighs 1,200 pounds, so that means that the weight is equal to 1,200 pounds. And I'm sorry for pounds, it's not pounds, it's Newton, 1,200 Newtons. And they say that the acceleration is 3.2 meters per second squared. The time taken is equal to 5.6 seconds and what do they want? Uh, they want the net force acting on the on the uh, car. So that's the second step. We've translated the given information and assigned a variable to that information. The next step would be uh, equations And uh, we are, we take a look at this. We see that we have weight, so we it might be that weight is going to be important to us here. We they're asking us for force, net force, and so the force acting on the car will just be equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car. Okay, so we think maybe. That's good. We're not using T, which might be kind of confusing, but sometimes they give us information we don't use. Uh, and this is that one of those cases. We have the weight of the car, and we have the acceleration of the car. Now, G, we know from the reading. G is the acceleration due to gravity, and it's always equal to 9.80 meters per second squared. So we have G as well. We know the weight, and we know the acceleration due to gravity, so we can obtain the mass of the car. If we have the mass of the car, and we know its acceleration, we can figure out what the net force is. Well, we have the acceleration on the car, and we can calculate its mass. So we could do that in two steps, but I'm going to show you here that if we just solve the uh, weight formula for the mass, we'll start with, with the weight. Okay, and I'm going to solve for mass. So the way I do that is I'm going to divide both sides by G. The G's cancel, and I'm left with. The weight divided by the gravity is equal to the mass. Okay. Now I have 
a calculation which will give me the mass and I know the acceleration so if I substitute the mass here in here for the mass uh, the mass here that is the mass here in for mass here and rewrite that formula of force is equal to the weight times the acceleration divided by gravity now some people um, ask do I have to do do I have to divide uh, the weight by gravity first and then multiply by the acceleration or can I multiply the weight by the acceleration and then divide by gravity and my answer is it doesn't matter you can do it either way so we have three of the four step three of the five steps done and the next step would be calculation We've arrived at uh, our working formula. So now we substitute in the values. That would be step four. So the weight is 1,200 newtons. And the acceleration is 3.2 meters per second squared and you divide by the gravity which is 9.8 meters per second squared and then the last step you have to do the, actually do the calculation so if you use the use your calculator the way that I would do this is I would go a 1200 times 3. Point, oops 3.2 divided by and when I hit I'm using a Texas instrument uh, 36x here when I hit the divide by it gives me 3840 and I'm going to divide by 9.8 and hit equals that gives me 391.8 and again the units cancel here and we're left with newtons. Now in the system when we ask you to write it to the one decimal place you would stop here. If you're real conscientious about uh, significant figures you come over here you say there's two significant figures here here and here and there's three of them here. You can't the rules of significant figures say you can't end up with more significant figures in your answer than you have in your least precise data point. So if we were following the rules of significant figures, we would do this. We would go, the force is equal to 390 newtons. Now some people get upset about that <clears throat> because they think we're throwing away precision. But you can't gain precision by mathematics. The only way you can gain precision is with a better instrument. And so, uh, you know, we're guessing to the third significant figure out here. So there's no way we can get four in our final answer. But when you, uh, uh, we will accept that uh, on the, uh, the system accepts it, and we'll take it down to the nearest data point. So this would be the one you would use if you were going to enter it into the system. Um, I think that's it. Now when I turn off my pen, this will all disappear, but we're at the end of the presentation anyway, so um, that's okay.